I'm going to add our next speaker in, and I'm going to go and try the pronunci the Polish pronunciation here. Zabushek. How yep, close very nice. I? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he also goes okay. by uh, Didi, if you're a good friend, that also works, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, all English speakers, uh, please use just the first two letters. I'm not going to put you through pronouncing that on a daily basis. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. if you'd like to share your screen, um, uh, sure. you're all set up and ready to go. Yep. Oh, yeah, let's choose this one. Well, you did. And you should yeah. see my slides now. Yeah, we got you there. So let's yeah, uh, let's crack on, and uh, Liran and I will uh, move ourselves out, and uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm running code from the internet, and what can you do about it? Um, so imagine I offered you a string of text that pretty much looks like uh, written in JavaScript. Would you put that in your application and run it? Yeah. Would you do that if I offered it as a targz file? Does that help? I guess so, because that's what an NPM package is, and everyone keeps uh, chewing on them every day, day in, day out. Uh, we do that a lot. And I just wanted to make sure that you understand. Uh, NPM packages are just bits of code in a targz file. Uh, and these are inputs from the internet that everyone tells you to sanitize. Uh, do you sanitize your NPM packages? Um, good question, right? You probably don't. Uh, we're just taking them and gobbling them up. And don't get me wrong, I do that as well. And I love it. Uh, I've been doing that for a while. Actually, the, this, uh, this animation, a previous version of this animation, um, is something I showed uh, a while back on a different Snake event uh, before I even joined LavaMote. Uh, and this talk is going to mention LavaMote. So uh, it's, it's been a journey. Uh, I first started looking into uh, what bad could happen around 2015. Uh, and uh, the number of bad things that can happen was just increasing. Uh, so let's not focus on vulnerable dependencies this time. Let's focus on malicious dependencies. Uh, there can be different types of malicious dependencies attacking you at different points of your application's lifecycle. So uh, let's now think about what bad things can happen either delayed slightly or right away. Um, yeah, story time. Uh, this is going to be a story where you meet Dave, who's a software engineer, and you meet Anon, who's uh, a malicious hacker. Dave has a project. Dave decides to install some dependencies, obviously. Um, NPM install, yarn install. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get them rolling. Anon happens to control uh, one of the packages somewhere deep in the dependency tree through some typo squatting, maybe a, a maintainer of something vaguely useful uh, installed a package that seemed to be what they wanted, but they kind of installed it and forgot. It's not being used, but it's there, right? So what would Dave think? Uh, I'm not running that, right? Uh, I'm just running my application and my build. I'm not running your package. Well, that's what you think, replies Anon, because Anon knows about lifecycle scripts, right? Um, and I guess everyone listening to this already knows where this is going about lifecycle scripts. So then um, Dave decides to defend against uh, post install by spawning a new container uh, running installation there instead of the main CI process, taking node modules and storing them somewhere, and then destroying the container. So Dave assumes now there's nothing uh, the evil hacker can do. Well, that's not what the evil hacker is thinking now. So the evil hacker takes uh, a post-install script and runs a bit more code 
that finds TypeScript and delivers a payload into the TypeScript compilers, compiled sources in node modules. And now when you transfer node modules away, you're still vulnerable because this TypeScript compiler turned evil. Uh, this is what I've been showing uh, way back. So if you want a demo, there's a demo of this. Uh, check my earlier presentations. Um, now, this I hope you also know. You can ignore scripts with NPM and Yarn. Uh, you can ignore post install scripts and all the lifecycle. And then you end up with a dilemma. So I have a dependency that really needs the lifecycle script. What do I do then? Well, I run npm rebuild bcrypt because bcrypt needs to be built for it to work in my application, right? And that's what Anon was counting that Dave would do. Because uh, npm CLI and the RN CLI and other CLIs, they trust packages to call themselves what they are actually called sometimes. So, you know, it's kind of hard to replace bcrypt on npm, but you don't have to replace it on npm. You can replace it in your own packages dependencies with anything that doesn't go through scrutiny, like a bundled dependency. Oopsie. Dave is surprised. Um, what could Dave do in that situation? other than exclaiming profanity. Um, well, Dave can uh, look for a tool that could help him. And that's where Lava Mode comes in. Um, so Lava Mode uh, helps you set up and drive your repository uh, in a way that the scripts uh, that Anon was using are no longer working. So when you set up uh, allow scripts, you get NPMRC with ignore scripts permanently uh, enabled, and then uh, the uh, auto generation command will give you policies that you can edit in your package JSON. So we can see that there's a bunch of stuff in there, and you can decide by setting them to true that you want this particular thing to work. And the benefit of using allow scripts is that uh, it differentiates packages. So uh, it will notice the difference between bcrypt and something deeply nested as a bundled dependency that happens to call itself bcrypt. And you will get two entries and you can decide which of them should work. Now, that's not the end. Uh, so if you've been following news, and Anon was following news, uh, Socket Security published uh, this new trick where you can decide that the command you expose from your package, uh, instead of being called like TSC, for example, uh, which is common for TypeScript, right? You should know that. Um, you can decide that the command you're exposing is called NPM or node. And that's going to resolve in the scripts you run uh, from your package JSON, right? So when you do NPM run lint, with this evil package installed, it's going to run the evil plots JS file uh, that was named npm by the designer of the package. Well, that's not good, but if you continue reading uh, the readme file on allow scripts, you will notice that allow scripts uh, is introducing an experimental feature where it can also control linking bins uh, not just the post install scripts. So just a matter of uh, a tiny change here and there uh, to control that as well. And if you want a demo, there's a demo of that. Uh, uh, check out the original article uh, from socket.dev. Right, so uh, what now? Well, Anon is upset because NPM said it was a feature that they couldn't break and now people are breaking that feature and not allowing him to take over the repositories. That's not good. Well, that marks uh, the end of the first chapter of our story. So, and in that moment, uh, we can say the installation process uh, was protected, um, at least from the malicious scripts, right? There's a bunch of other things uh, we could talk about, but we won't. Uh, let's focus on a more serious threat where 
Anon is going to put a bit more effort into getting into your dependencies and find something that you actually use that they can take over. So now this gets uh, more serious because you're running code. So Anon introduces a bit of bad code uh, into the package. Uh, would you look into your node modules to find it? Well, there is a bunch of tools, uh, not excluding SNCC, obviously. SNCC also does that, uh, that go through all of the code in your dependencies to find these things. But Anon goes further and obfuscates the code. Well, is this obfuscation good enough? Uh, are you still reading? Well, it still says HTTPS and GitHub token, okay. Let's go further. Should I keep going? I can keep going. This is the same code, but uh, with the heavy obfuscation, uh, which is now 70 kilobytes uh, of just JavaScript. And it runs. Uh, if you try to deobfuscate it, um, it stops running. So it's a bit harder to figure out. Um, and this is what people do. There's packages, like if you if you look up Lofi Gang, uh, one of the recent exploits, they published packages that are, had four layers of obfuscation. Okay, but yes, there's an app for that. Uh, well, Dave already found LavaMote and allow scripts uh, is just a tiny tool. The main functionality of LavaMote that I wanna focus on here is runtime protections. Um, so what you need to do is you need to generate a policy for your code running. Uh, in this case, let's look at a build script. So we have build.js uh, that we run. And we now, instead of doing node build.js, do lava mode build.js. And then we have a command for generating the policy. And the policy kind of looks something like this. This is a small section, assuming uh, the evil package was uh, clear, not obfuscated. This is what uh, you would see for that evil package's code. So we say uh, request from HTTPS module from built-ins is used and process.env from globals uh, is being used. Okay, so now I can override anything uh, by just saying false or, if the package was obfuscated, uh, the initial scan uh, to generate the policy would not find uh, the usage. And what's great about what happens next is that we only read the code with some ASTs from Lava Mode uh, when generating the policy. But the, when the policy is applied, well, that happens on the level of the language itself. So now when you run build, uh, you will get an error saying evil package requested HTTPS. And that was not in the policy. So require HTTPS will throw an error. Um, if that's not the first thing happening, well, uh, you might get a different error that says type error could not read env from undefined because you know what? process is not one of the globals available to this particular package. Meanwhile, everything else could have access to process and use it. Wait, how? How is this done? That's impossible, right? Uh, every package has different globals. Well, let's take a peek inside. Okay, story is over. Now we get into what's behind Lava Mode. Uh, and the main technology behind LavaMote is SES, uh, short for Secure ECMAScript. Uh, this is a tool that allows putting each package in its own compartment, uh, which is a box that lets you define how things are loaded and, most of all, uh, which globals uh, are going to be available. So every compartment gets a different object to be their globals if we want to. And the best thing is compartments are becoming part of the language. Uh, so there's work in TC39 to put compartments into the language with all the functionality necessary uh, for spinning them up. Um, it's still early, 
So yeah, well, you won't be able to uh, get an update uh, on your browser or Node.js tomorrow and get this feature, but uh, it's being worked on and it will get into the language eventually. Now, SAS uh, consists of three major things. So there's compartment for scope isolation. There's lockdown, which uh, makes your entire realm or as V8 people like to call it context secure. This means uh, no more prototype pollution attacks that you could use to escape your uh, compartment. And then harden uh, is for use with the actual program when you want uh, an object from your program that you pass into uh, a different piece of code that you don't trust uh, to not be modifiable, okay? Wait, uh, so JavaScript is being designed to be secure? Well, no, JavaScript is, it, it just happens to be a good design for security uh, because the language itself is standardized with ECMAS TC39. Meanwhile, all the powerful features are standardized elsewhere in W3C or uh, in Node.js working groups. If you take Conway's law that says uh, every organization is going to deliver software whose uh, shape resembles the communication structure of that organization, it means we get good separation between, between the language and the APIs. Uh, so any powerful API is only reachable through scope or by requiring it. Um, and since compartment controls all of that, we get hardened JavaScript as a result. Okay, that was a lot. Recap time. Uh, first, install time protections with allow scripts. You can install allow scripts in your repository, run the two commands to configure it, and you're protected from lifecycle scripts. Uh, additional protections against bins that were rolling out about now. Uh, runtime protections with lav mode and a policy. Uh, introducing that is a bit more work because you need to refine your policy a bit, um, but this is super powerful. And behind all of that, there's hardened JavaScript with SES also, you can use SES directly if you're building a tool or product where you want to run untrusted code and get the benefit from that without the risk. Um, and Lavamote is protecting installation, build, and runtime of MetaMask, uh, which is being used by about 30 million people. Um, and there is a future extension system for MetaMask that uses SAS directly to run someone else's functionality within uh, MetaMask, uh, which is also interesting. And that's based on guarantees that SAS gives us. Um, it's already available. Uh, you can use it, you can play with it. If you want to know more about SAS, uh, check out my earlier talk uh, where I get into detail how it, the current shim uh, how it works right now. And then you can uh, look at Mark Miller's talk. Uh, Mark Miller is the inventor of SES. Uh, and there's a lot more information about the, the, the principle of how it's working and why it's the way it is. Um, and I'm offering to help you set up Lava Mode in your project. So either scan this or go to Nautor PL. You can find uh, means to contact me there. And I'm obviously joining Discord. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Awesome. Thank you very much. This is your specialist field around. So I'll. Uh... Hey. <laughs> That was fun. Yep. Um, so do we have questions or do you want to see a demo? I personally thought that JavaScript was already uh, secure, but uh, looks to see uh, there's still some work to do. <laughs> uh, so we've got lots of good, good uh, comments here. Great presentation. I do have a question, actually. Let's uh, see if we can, from uh, from the... Is it secure to host passwords within package.json? I'm not sure whether that's a serious question or not, but. Um, it's always secure, it's JavaScript. <laughs> well, uh, you shouldn't put your passwords 
uh, anywhere that's accessible to anyone else. Uh, and since packet JSON tends to be in a repository, definitely not a good idea. Yeah, great. Okay, well, I think we, we're just about on time. <laughs>